beautiful silver salmon. On this week's episode of the G3 Sportsman, we're cruising the Alaskan coast searching for an ideal spot to wet a line. Hey, there's no phone, no lights, no luxuries at all. Just five guys and their ATVs in some of the grandest country in the world. It's always an adventure in our 50th state, and who knows, we may even see a grizzly. So saddle up, boys, we're burning daylight. Let's get them started. That's gotta be close to 20. I lost him. <laughs> Give me my fish. He <laughs> fell off. Well, that thing pulled twice as hard as a silver. Look at this cat. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can catch that. Nice fish. Thank you, fish. That's what I'm talking about. Get you some of that. The G3 Sportsman is presented by Yamaha, when you want the best. Hey, welcome to the G3 Sportsman. Okay, let's just say you rub the, the bottle, the genie comes out and he says, okay, you got three choices. You can fish anywhere in the world. I'll bet you one of those choices, without much thought, would be Alaska. So on today's episode, that's exactly where we're at. We're in the last frontier for some fantastic silver salmon fishing near the Cook Inlet in the southwest part of the state. Now, so look, put a little twist on today's show will be how the Gator Tough team will be arriving to their fishing spots. Now, four-wheelers are the vehicle of choice on today's show. Now, I'm not real sure which these guys enjoyed more, the fishing, or the rides down the beach. No other place in our country does a state offer more for the outdoorsman than Alaska. Wildlife roam this place with freedom unmatched in any other state. The air is clean and cool, and if you look hard enough in any direction, you'd swear heaven was just beyond the horizon. You can virtually spin the bottle and find abundant lakes, rivers, and streams, all loaded with several species of gear grinding fish. On today's show, the Gator Tough team will try a different approach. They've hooked up with Tim Cook of Alaska's ATV Adventures, and they are about to embark on yet another great way of catching fish in our last frontier. Well, we're getting in here just about high tide, and we should have a good run of silvers that have come in with the tide, and what they'll do is run up this river that we're going to. They'll come in off the ocean, they'll cruise up the river, and some of them will stay behind, and uh, ripen up to lay their eggs, then the rest of them will go back out into the ocean and go for another try. But uh, we're going to try to intercept some of the fresh ones. Using this split ring. Yeah. We we have all these in single hooks because a lot of the water we fish. Okay, well we're about three quarters of a mile up from where this river dumps into the ocean. And uh, it's about high tide and the fish are coming up, they're holding in these pools. And what we're trying to do is get our lure out in front of them and uh, get them to hit it. We're trying to stay behind the grass because they are able to see us and uh, once they do that, you'll notice when you cast out, the fish will seem to move away to the other okay. side, and you want to try to keep within range. So. All right, well, I think we're going to try to do this. Uh, I'm ready. I've got a little Vibrex on. I had pretty good luck on it last year. It's blue color, so I'm going to try that. So let's a good get day work. for it. Okay. Yeah. There's a fish. You're the man, Steve. Okay. I could just get. I just want him away from that brush. Now here in the That's middle, the gold one. So I don't lose it again. Fresh fish that have just come in out of the ocean make these very long, powerful runs. Uh, I guess because they're out. They've been out in the ocean all year. They've been running from orcas and nets and 
sharks and salmon sharks oh, and who knows what all they've been running from out there, but they're very strong and very powerful and they make these determined runs straight away from you as soon as they're hooked. These fish are coming up out of the ocean fresh and when I say fresh, I mean some of them may have only been in here a few hours. The ocean is just right over the hill from us. Uh, Tim told us that when they come in like that and their preparation for spawning, they're actually looking for any kind of competing eggs or anything in here so they'll swat and try and kill any salmon egg coming by or anything that's not part of their species. These fish are whacking at these lures and uh, occasionally you get one foul hooked because they're out there and they're all darting in and out and that one was obviously tail hooked according to the state of Alaska. Any fish that's foul hooked, not caught in the mouth, needs to be released. So we're going to release this silver. You ready? Okay, let's let him go. All right. Make sure he's going to go first here. Revive him just a little bit. All right, buddy, go ahead. There we go. I'll try again. Nice job. What I mean by when they just came up out of the ocean, I mean like right there. They haven't come, they're coming in a little tiny inlet creek and they're making a cut and coming right up in this little river. It's not, it's not 200 yards back behind us to the actual ocean itself. So they're, each tide that comes in, Tim said there'll be a new fresh batch of silvers come in and that's why they're all that chrome color, they just haven't been up in fresh water very long. My brother Paul actually wrote an article, I believe it was in Field and Stream, about a group of guys who went to Alaska, got on four-wheelers, and took off down Cook Inlet uh, to find silver salmon. So we hooked up with Tim at Alaska ATV Adventures, which is the same guy that they used from the article, and we said, you know, we'd like to go do this trip. He said, you guys will have a great time. Not only was it fun catching fish, but the four-wheeler ride down that beach, which was all black gravel with beautiful mountains and volcanoes to our left, looking out across the ocean, and then green, beautiful pastured hills on our right. It was just amazing. Holy oh, man, what a run. Oh, that's a run. I think he didn't like to be on this side of the bank. When they're out of fresh water like that, it's just bam and straight away. And that drag is just singing when they first hit. And they might run 50 yards. A couple of times I got scared that I was going to completely run out of line. So I took off running down the bank chasing the fish until it got tired. Then you work them back in and you think, oh, okay, I've, I've got this now. And then boom, they do it again. All right, get ready because I'm going to try and bring him around. All right. And what's he think about that? Thinks he doesn't want to be on this side of the bank. But I'm getting him worn down. Good job. Good job. Wow. Hey, nice sword. Nice sword. <sighs> nice. Fresh silver. Sushi tonight, when you hook these fish, they just go absolutely ballistic and take out almost all your line. Sometimes you have to run up and down the bank with them and the fresher they are, it seems like the stronger they're fighting because they've just come out of that ocean current. But uh, um, we're gonna have to take that one back for sushi and crackers or something like that. Slice them up thin and then put the other half on the grill. Beautiful silver salmon. I'm worn out. That fish 
kicked my tail. Try and see if I can find another one to go with the sushi. And I can go down and show these boys how to do it. We've been up here a, a couple of times fishing for silvers in the past and we figured out that these just little orange Vibrex spinners, number three and number four, seem to work really good. Uh, I don't know whether it kind of emulates a salmon egg going through the water or what, but they seem to really like those with the gold blade. And sometimes they like the silver blade, but I like to throw the gold blade one and fishing it on a Fluger spinning reel and a uh, little two-piece rod. You can't really get the one-piece rods through the airport, so we always bring uh, two-piece rods or pack rods with us and then you can just throw them together when you get here. I'm gonna see if I can get back over there on the other side of that bank and get another one of those big chromies. One, two. I'll just keep this. I've had it. Where we were actually, where we're actually fishing is a, a river that comes into Cook Inlet, which is part of the Gulf of Alaska. And it looks like just any other little river on Alaska coming in, but the, the unique thing about it was, although we could see the fish laying out there, it was tall grass. And I guess because those fish are used to bears jumping in on them and all kinds of stuff, as you'd approach the bank, they'd kind of slide to the other side. <laughs> well, they will hit a lure quickly and aggressively but the problem is that lure has got to pass about that far in front of their face. Gosh, Mike, it takes forever to get these fish in. You are. I did. He hit it hard. Good job. Another nice fish. Thanks. You remember about a month ago? Yeah. What were we doing in a show? Bass oh. fishing? Yeah. Remember what happened that day? You kicked my butt. <laughs> You know what? I'm sick of it. This is payback. <laughs> Will you please let me catch yes. a fish? Please. You caught them. I just need to get one in. I'm going to let this fish go. <laughs> please let me catch a fish. The accommodations that Tim Cook put us up at, in my opinion, were the most gorgeous views I've ever had at any lodge, cabin, anywhere in Alaska. You're basically sitting on a cliff looking out over the ocean and you can see all these mountains. The views were just spectacular. There are barges going by. Sitting out on that deck is one of my most memorable experiences in Alaska as far as lodging goes. I mean, that was back there a long way. Oh. They always They always go crazy when they get up here. Yeah. That's why I get a little loose. Half the size of that one you caught. It looks like about 40 pounds. Yeah, that's a world record. You had a tough that day. is a world record silver salmon for me. You've hooked fish after fish after fish, and some days the luck is just tough. The trick to it is you're making really long casts because they they'll move to the other side, and then you've got to be kind of pinpoint with where that lure hits because if it comes by right here they'll hit it every time, but it's hard to get it right there. So that was the challenging part of it. But once you got it in that sweet spot, they would drill it every time or at least slap at it. 
in the net, brother. <laughs> Don't fall in the water now. I know you're excited. Uh, in the all net. All right. Let's put him up here on the bank and get a look at him. Uh, now you can eat. You know, I'm not much of a salmon eater, but when you take one of those salmon, fillet them, and put them on the grill. Good job. Uh, put a few onions on the top. I'll try not to let him go back in the water. You Got just, your pliers? No, I wish I did have. Oh, oh, there they are. Okay. Oh, look, that one was at least finally. Uh, he finally hooked one good enough that he wasn't coming off. Hooked good. Uh, all right. Let's see if you get your hook out of there. Yeah. So we don't end up. Do you want to leave him in the net until you get up there? Uh, yeah, that's fine. I would. Okay. Oh. Never admire your fish next to the water. That's my tip of the day. That's your tip of the day. <laughs> Finally caught me a silver salmon. I've had probably eight or ten really good ones hooked today, and it's just been one of those days for me. Uh, right now, I'm tickled to death. I brought you a cooler. I like it. This is what it's all about. Thought you could use a cooler. Now we're getting somewhere. Half as big. Half I, I don't know what to tell you. Half. You are the man when it comes to fishing. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, 20 years ago I came up here on what I called at the time the five-year plan and uh, it's evolved into something much more with the business and taking people out to enjoy Alaska's wilderness and uh, I don't see any end to it. There's just so much to see and do up here. It's uh, just an awesome adventure every day. Most of the fish are going to average anywhere from probably six to nine, ten pounds, but every once in a while you're going to have a fish that may go 13, 15, 16. So we were using Berkeley Trilene 12 pound test, figuring we wouldn't have a lot of fish over that. But the reels were medium to medium heavy. You need a lot of line on there because when those fish make that run, that first initial run, you, you tend to worry if you're going to lose all your line. Big fish. If you've ever been thinking about someday seeing Alaska, I'd urge you to go. Now is the time. Every time we go, we, we have to work through little issues here and there because it is a wild place. It is the wildest place you'll ever see. But it is so beautiful that you just can't miss it. You have to go there at least once. Pretty nice fish though, huh? Okay. Okay, it's been a great day on the Kenai Peninsula. We're in right on the edge of Cook Inlet. Uh, we've been with Tim Cook. Uh, it, we've fished for silvers. It's, we've struggled a little bit. We did end up with a beautiful limit. Tim, we'd like to thank you for everything you've done for us. Uh, great machines, beautiful scenery. Thank you very much. Thank you. You guys did a Thanks, great buddy. job. Mountains were great. The ride was great. The fishing was fun. and. We're looking forward to going back and staying in those beautiful cabins you have for us. Sounds good. Appreciate it. And maybe even a barbecue. If you'll cook We're liking that. We're liking we'll that. that. We're liking that. Thank you. Even if you went to Alaska, which a lot of people do, and you don't fish or you don't get a chance to fish while you're there, the scenery is just breathtaking. And what makes it so unique is that it's breathtaking in every single direction that you look. The scenery is so unique in Alaska because you've got tundra, you've got mountains, you've got marshes, rivers, crystal clear lakes, and Mount McKinley is just breathtaking when you get to see it for the first time. 
The other thing that's, that's so interesting about Alaska is the people. The people are all literally living on the frontier. They're all good natured, good hearted people and they just do anything for you. Once you get there, you find that the people are just as spectacular as the scenery. We're all wondering what's going to happen in this in this crazy world that we live in. And, and, and it may not be as, as bad as we're thinking, but something is going to happen soon. And parts of the country that still remain wild and free could be changing. So for the most part, Alaska for now is still North America's last great true wilderness. And if at all possible, take the family for a visit. It's our last link to the past and, and truly our last frontier. Hey, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the show. And we'll see you somewhere next week right here on the G3 Sportsman.